and welcome back and we are moving into our second segment for today uh, as we talk more about Dia de los Muertos or as it's known in Benque, de Finados. Mm -hmm. And who better to tell us about it than the coordinator of the Benque House of Culture, Nayeli Yacab. Good morning. Good morning. And thank you for being here. Thank you as well for a kind invitation and having us here today. Well, we know uh, that obviously you had to pack up and get here very early. Right. <laughs> um, but we greatly appreciate it because this is, I think, uh, one of the days that people really don't quite understand, right? Right. So let's step back and talk about uh, what the meaning of Dia de los Muertos or Finados is. Well, for us, it's a very special day. Um, just like in our culture, in the Maya Mestizo culture, um, birth and death are celebrated. Yeah. And this is one of the homages that we prepare for the ones that have departed this world. So in one of these festivities in our community, we prepared these delicacies, which are very um, native to our community. Yeah. Yeah. And um, many families do this preparation, and especially when you have someone to prepare it for. Today, November 1st, is for the innocent children who have departed. Mm -hmm. And November 2nd is observed for the adults. Yeah. So we have made a little combination here for you guys mm -hmm. so that we could have it on display. And um, we have several elements that are very mm -hmm. essential for us to have here present today. Um, we have the bees, candles, wax. And there is a yeah. particular reason why we have the, the candles. It's a way to guide the path of our loved one into this world because we believe that there is a spiritual life when your yeah. life here in art ends. Yeah. So we also accompany every time we have an altar we need to have a crucifix, a rosary because there is a syncretism of the Maya Mestizo heritage mm -hmm. combining into the, our Catholic religion. Mm -hmm. So before uh, we lay our tables in the morning we need to offer prayers. So in the mornings we offer breakfast. Mm -hmm. So we would have hot cocoa, homemade mm -hmm. um, sweet sweet bread and that's laid in the morning we'll have biscuits with our candles yeah so in the morning for november 1st and 2nd we have the breakfast okay. preparation and then um during lunch so you just you you just lay it out right you wouldn't i mean it's not it's not sitting and eating it it's laying it out it's for laying it your out loved ones right to yeah. come in and isn't there something about it being very hot as well because it has to be hot the because steam. they will feed off the fumes yeah so uh Prayers are offered before the, um, it is shared with family and friends because this is also a very peculiar meaning that we have to share what we have with our friends and neighbors for continuity, for prosperity. Now, uh, how, different is the, how different is the celebration of Finados in Benque uh, versus the Dia de los Muertos as we see it uh, celebrated on, in Mexico? Well, in Mexico, uh, there is the, the tradition of, well, laying your altar and particularly in Benke the, the origin of this comes from the uh, breakdown of the Castle War. Mm -hmm. The the Yucat explain to, to Petén Guatemala yeah. and then due to the Cabrera and Ubico regime mm -hmm. they settled in, in and then they met the Itzas in, in the Petén area. So they have fused and meshed in and they moved to Western Belize San Jose and Benque Viejo del Carmen meeting with the Chan Mayas. So we have a fusion and enrichment so we have made it to Finados. Mm -hmm. And talk to us about how it's celebrated across the entire Central Re Central America and region. Well, there is a well, like I, I, I tell you, in, in, in Mesoamerica, the celebration comes from way back, and then this we could also trace it to Europe mm -hmm. of um, having the Mayas buried with their particular unique items because there is an afterlife. Mm -hmm. And then, since the whole region has been um, particularly uh, uh, in the heart of, of the Mayas, then mm -hmm. we have this. Um, Different cultures celebrated by only visiting the cemetery or taking food with their loved ones. Some people um, have conversations with their loved ones from early in the morning. They take music, mariachis, yeah. depending on, on how you want to celebrate it. Mm -hmm. But here in the rest of, of, of our country, we have the Corozal House of Culture celebrating it as Hanal Pishan, as uh -huh. the origins in, in the in the Yucatec Peninsula. Mm -hmm. We have the Banquitas House of Culture having something very similar, mm -hmm. as sharing mm -hmm. treats, uh, rendering prayers. We also have a very active House of Culture in San Pedro, okay. where prayers are, are offered with their treats. No? So uh, it's a, a rich tradition, part of, of the Maya Mestizo, intangible cultural heritage Absolutely. that we're trying to promote and preserve. 
yeah. by inviting schools. Uh, at the particular at the Bank House of Culture, we invite the schools on an annual basis mm -hmm. from the origins and the conceptions of the of the House of Culture. Now, typically each year, you create an altar at the Bank House of Culture for a specific person from the community. Who is the person being honored uh, this year? This year, we we decided well. It's, it's very uh, challenging getting who we're going to have it, but um, as, as one of the very important aspects is that the person needs to have an annual celebration. We cannot have the person who has passed away from six months, three months. Okay. We need to wait for an entire year. Mm -hmm. And this particular year we're celebrating on the honor of, of Miss Carlota Castellanos, who was a very jovial character and a, a very uh, faithful member of the Benke House of Culture. Uh, mm -hmm. Here she is. And she passed away how long? One year ago. Okay. Okay. And so let's talk about the elements here. Now, I know with Mexico, there's the pan de muerto. Yes. Do we use the pan de muerto? Oh, we use sweet bread. Okay. Sweet bread. Sweet yeah. homemade bread. Okay. So in Benke, there's a high demand. In, in Mary, very, a lot of Such items. Such a here. high demand. We have no pan de muerto here. <laughs> <laughs> but it does, it, it has a different taste. It has something else in it that, that makes it taste different than, than regular bread. Yes, mm -hmm. they will use anise seed, and there's a lot of spices that is being used with it. It's delicious. So it makes it special for the occasion. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the spread we have here and why these are included and I know some are very unique to this particular celebration right mm -hmm. well we have the bees candles wax yeah. um, and these are hand dripped candles and we make it at the house of culture and as part of promoting what is not too common now mm -hmm. okay. so we train youths children for the past so uh, you several made these? years so we made this oh nice yes. and it's made out of the bees because we consider this to be a pure form the bees are hardworking. Uh, there is a lot of superstition behind it. Um, at Tell first, us. well, may, only men used to prepare it. Men who have abstained from, from sexual sex. practice. Mm -hmm. So this is very like pure. Abstain so for a period of time. Yes. Okay. But in today's world, we are also preparing it. Mm -hmm. The females are now yes. preparing it. So there's a, a, a lot of superstition. You don't go to the bathroom. Oh, you wow. prepare it because it has to be pure. That's right, in right. essence what you're so trying to do. So we cannot even um, take it off or or lift it off with our mouth. It has to be totally consumed because with our mouth, of course, with our mouth, we say bad words. Oh and wow. wow! So we have to be very peculiar on how we we carry on our altar. We, it should also be accompanied by a crucifix, a rosary, an image of Mary. Yeah. And this is a syncretism within mm -hmm. culture, fusing in with our Catholicism, yeah. Right. And this started with the Franciscans coming to mm -hmm. this world and getting mm -hmm. us on board. It also should be accompanied by fresh flowers, mm -hmm. often marigolds. Mm -hmm. Marigolds? So we have... Here but these ones are, are, are synthetic. Mm -hmm. we'll, we'll pretend they're real, right? For <laughs> <laughs> well, they're real. But they should offer the fresh aroma of, of welcoming the yeah. spirits. Oh. It should also have a glass of water to quench your thirst. And water is life. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we consider this to be very special. So we have and the water here. Long. Yeah. Right. So the journey is long. Mm -hmm. and, um, here, particularly, uh, a native to Benke, we have the Ishpasha, which is the Ishpasha. purple porridge. There we go. This is it here. I don't know if you can see it. Now, what is this made from? This is made from black corn, and it's mostly in a very particular form in, in made. Uh, the preparation is just similar to Maja Blanca. Ah. So that some people use um, sugar. It's, sif it's sifted. Um, and we s is it's it sweetened. But it's also, there's also some superstition about how to prepare the Ishpasha. Well, you don't have to, you know, when you're in the kitchen, you shouldn't be talking loud, you shouldn't be cursing, you shouldn't be going to the bathroom. And, yeah. so it's a very a pure process. Yes. And I noticed that you have them on... On the gourds. So the, the gourds are, are very special elements in, in the Mama so heritage. Mm -hmm. And we also uh, do courses on how to prepare your gourds. Oh. And this wow. year we prepare the beeswax candles, which we do annually, and mm -hmm. then the preparation of Ishpasha. Mm -hmm. Great. Because for many, we just consume it, but we don't know how to prepare it. So yeah. we had the... the the interesting experience of, of having the preparation process. And it's a great preservation of culture. So the definitely. younger ones will definitely know how it should be done as well. Right. And it's a mandate from the House of Culture for us to promote even if families, because today women have a different role of being at work and maybe mm -hmm. not laying in, and maybe the grandparent is sick or early, but we need to carry on this and we invite the schools to come. This year we're doing it very differently. We're mm -hmm. having it on a weekend so that people who are working and don't have the the time to prepare it in their altars, they can say that they didn't have a taste of Ishpasha during ah. this year. So we're having it on November 11th. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So it's a black pudding. corn pudding. That's what gives it that color. Porridge. It looks porridge, porridge. sorry. Mm -hmm. So it looks uh, purplish because yes. of the... Uh, and, and it's very I'm native to show of the them season. How it, gee, how it shakes. Like, it's very gelatinous. That's why I was calling looking. it pudding, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and we have the boyos of Ishpelon. The, the beans is called Ishpelon and it's uh, boyos. native to this season. Those are beans in it? Yes. Yeah, black beans. Black beans. Mm. Is it? Mm. Yes. Okay. Similar to black beans, but it's Ishpelon. Ishpelon. Mm. Now, this is also very common uh, on most altars, right? Mm. Yes. That is one of the most important elements. However, we also need to consider that depending on what your relative yeah. likes yeah, like, to consume, okay. We also have like a liquor, cigars, we put ideals. There's not really a limitation on what you have. Yeah. If you're a relative like um, fried chicken, you should have mm -hmm. a fried chicken. So it's to honor the person It's passed. honor to honor yeah. your person, mm -hmm. your, your beloved, yeah, beloved member. Mm -hmm. So sweets are common on altars for oh, children. Oh, very much, very much. Mm -hmm. It could be the typical sweets, but we have sweets that we consume during the season that are very special for us. Yeah. We have the uh, green papaya syrup. Okay. We have the, we could have tambran sweets, we have the coco brood, the tableta, mm -hmm. we have the chocho, mm -hmm. we have um, the What's pumpkin it? sweet. Yes. We As didn't have all these because we're preparing our altar nine days right. for this one. Okay. But um, this is something. We have a pretty good have. spread here. It's a decent yeah. spread. So yeah. tell us how long you have the, the altar up for it typically. Typically, well, like I, I mentioned to you, we have it in the morning, which is breakfast. Mm -hmm. Then after prayers are offered, you share it with your, your friends or neighbors. Mm -hmm. And then in the evening at 12, you need to have your altar ready with your white clean linen. With, you don't have no children rushing around. Oh. Mm -hmm. it's, it's very solemn. Mm -hmm. So prayers are offered, the prayer ladies visit, or you um, offer your prayers. Yeah. Then in the evening, when well, you visit the cemetery with your pa painted... Um, yeah tombs you take fl fresh flowers your wreaths mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the things for belizeans that if they wanted to see the experience they could definitely go out uh to especially i know in Cayo, i haven't been to the north for it um but you can see people at the cemeteries gathered yes, with much, music with food and drinks it's almost like a mini party uh, right yeah right. and you know you why tradition follows and why tradition is growing is because whenever it hits you very close by your mother, yeah. your sister, you don't want them mm -hmm. in the spiritual world to come and nothing mm -hmm. is prepared. Um, my, my family has a very unique experience and many families have their own experiences of, uh, um, in, in our one, our grandmother was working and she did not prepare her altar on the second and they had heard certain noises, you know, the, the front door was swinging oh, wow. by. And then nine days after, she had to prepare her altar because we believe that our grandfather visited mm -hmm. and he didn't have the... He was not he very was not happy. Welcome. Yeah. He was not welcome. So for us, it's very special. Mm -hmm. And once it hits you very close by, well, then you prepare your altar regardless of your working status. Many people who are working prepare during the evening. I mm. was just going to ask that because I think... Yeah, we all assume sometimes that some of these traditions fade over time and it's perhaps just uh, organizations like House of Culture. Mm -hmm. But within the homes, in Benke, for example, where you are, would you say that most families have an altar set up for these two days? Well, you know that in today's world, the people ha are more busy than before. Mm -hmm. and, and, peop and, and women especially take a different role yeah. mm -hmm. in today's world. But when I tell you, when it hits you close by, you need to prepare mm -hmm. your altar. And we have also have the integration of, of different Central American religions mm -hmm. coming yeah. over and having a different change of, of, of their surroundings and how they view tradition and culture. Yeah. So I would say that once it, it hits you very close by, you have... You they, find people, you will find do people it. who will do it. And especially mm -hmm. our golden citizens in Benke order their items from early in October. They know who are the providers of the black... Um, Corn, they know who are the providers. They they order their green leaf, their banana leaves. Yeah. They would order their stuff that they need, or, or people who prepare these mm -hmm. items. So you could find the line at the corn mills of people who mm. need their masses for their boils. Yeah. The providers of the the Ishpelon legumes. So yeah. there is a um, the festivities is highly encouraged in the community. What would you say if someone were to view an Ooh. altar in, let's say, uh, Central America, Belize, and Mexico. What would be the difference in the altars? Well, the difference in the altars is, is dependent on how, if, if you would have it at a farm, 
-hmm. you would find different elements. Okay. Right. You have uh, different altars with the different three tiers, mm -hmm. four tiers, depending. Mm -hmm. At the very top, you have the crucifix, the picture of the person, the water. On the other our tier, you would have like the liquors, cigars, mm -hmm. and the food of the person. You can also put in personal belongings. Mm -hmm. oh. But um, like, like, like I mentioned to you, if, if there is no, um, you can also find the altars at the cemeteries. Yeah. Because mm. I know that is very peculiar also in, in Guatemala yeah. and Mexico. So different, also the different um, denominations of, of the Mayan culture celebrated very differently at, at yeah. their homes. Yeah. Like in Mexico, they do have the candy skull. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yeah. So and in Mexico, you find it that Dia de los Muertos is the way of how you mock death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and chase away. There's yes, the, right. there's so the that one your, that the chases way of away saving yourself spirits. from yeah. death. <laughs> right. So that is your 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 runaway from, yeah. from death. Yeah, and that's actually the origin of of this this of face that everybody the face mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But that also keeps us our culture rich and yeah. in the promotion of, of of these because we have also the 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 um, culture the American culture of Halloween. Yeah. You know, you want to take your kids trick or cheating. You you need so our culture is not just putting our costume, yeah. right? you know? Yeah. So it's more than that and beyond because we believe that there's a spiritual life. Mm -hmm. And as part of a mandate of the Bank House of Culture, with this is enriching to our communities and it's a mandate from the other houses of culture in Belize. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I particularly like the cultural aspect. I was sharing with you guys earlier. The reason why I have this, this flower kong on is because my great grandfather is actually from Mexico. I think I, I gave, um, um, production of picture of my grandfather but I love why how it promotes the, the preservation of culture right. tell us how we how um, uh, the different schools and different or organizations how they're promoting the, the preservation of the we're, the we're very glad that our community embraces this um, mm -hmm. especially in the high schools like you know there's a, a certain age that we drift away we were, we were looking for recreation mm -hmm. we we're looking for everything because we have been there. I mean, yeah. We were high school students. We were part of of, of these. Um, but we find it very encouraging that cultural promoters are all around. Mm -hmm. And um, like at Mopan Technical High School, we had the privilege of working with students, mm -hmm. doing interviews, mm -hmm. making their own candles. So mm -hmm. it's also important for us not to just have our courses and people coming in, yeah. but use it, making use of it, learning the process, yeah. learning how to create it, and people and, and making it a sustainable. Um, project as well because yeah. many people who have learned this process mm -hmm. carry carry it on as, as yeah. a as economical and, and viable projects in their homes wow. okay. so we we encourage and we're very grateful to the schools particularly in in the community of bank so what we find that mm -hmm. the schools place their own altars kids mm -hmm. bring in sweets um their tablecloths so they they do have yeah. this yeah. at the schools and it's very important for us to upkeep what do you find is the greatest misconception that people have about Dia de los Muertos or Finados? Well, you know, the different people have different aspects of it, um, and particularly when it comes to religion and the syncretism of it, mm -hmm. it looks as a, a pagan uh, mm. celebration. It looks yeah. like um, there, is no de there is no life after death. Uh, but for us in particular, it is, is very special. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, and this is not a, a commercial industry. Yeah, right. It's not Halloween. Like I, I read an yeah. article by USA Today, um, Dia de los Muertos is not Mexican Halloween. Yeah. It's not Latin right, American Halloween. Right. And, and Mexico that. has taken a very bold step in right. promoting this. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the way how we have to view it in our own selves because some it, it's, it's very um, shameful to know that even our kids at schools, you know, they don't know about certain things or their parents are not doing their jobs mm -hmm. by telling them their kids oh this is yeah. like I say sometimes you don't have to do it or consume it but you need to have the knowledge mm -hmm. yeah. of knowing your origins if we are a people that we don't know our history or origins well society is doomed yeah. Yeah, you know, sure. we don't know how or have a pathway to to conduct ourselves I think that was such an important point to bring out though because I think so easily and, and the reason I spoke of the La Catrina is so many people use it now as a Halloween costume yes. and I don't think they know exactly what it represents yeah. um, and it's so I, I think 
this is not so much about celebrate, well, it is about celebrating the life of the person, but there is a significant meaning to the family, right. to the people who prepare the altar. There's a lot of solemnness involved, in fact, as well, except when they're, they're, they're celebrating at the cemetery, right? Right. Yeah, yes. and sharing the food. So what, what are some of the other things? If somebody wants to venture into creating their own altar that they can do as well. We know pure candles, beeswax candle, beeswax candle, uh, your crucifix, your rosary, your photograph, photos, flower, the, the, the seeds, water, mm -hmm. water uh, your favorite yeah. dish of, of the And favorite dishes, dishes. Yeah. yeah. All right. And what is this in the center here? That's hot cocoa that's prepared early oh, in the morning. With the so bread. With the bread. Oh, there you okay. go. And so the heat of it all is what uh, they yes. would consume. Oh, and the lights are not turned off, the, the candles, it, until it's mm -hmm. completely consumed. Okay. Nice. And is that when you close off the altar, when the candles die down? Yes. Okay. Ah. And after prayers are, are done. Because it's Lent prayers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you mentioned that this year you're doing your, um, the Benke House of Culture will be doing their uh, altar on the weekend yes and we're doing it in in um as focusing on the nine days after mm -hmm. and selecting a weekend because um you know all other other weekends they have the halloween celebration that you're mm -hmm. treating and this year we want to focus on the nine days and, and elaborate a bit on it mm -hmm. and we also want it to be a family event coming yeah. together so people can go to the house of culture and see the altar that you have prepared yes mm -hmm. okay so they can visit us from 5 30 till 10 at night so to have this cultural experience. Yes. Okay. So we thank you so much for coming in and sharing that. Is there anything else you'd like the public to know about Finados? Well, I, I believe that once you have someone who is very special for you, there is, if you don't have the time to prepare an altar, but there is the visitation at the cemetery, carrying our flowers, carrying your wreaths, and even like you mentioned, having your floral wreath, it, it, it's very significant for us because this is the continuation of how we promote culture, right. of having the Katrinas, the Day of the Dead, and, mm -hmm. and even with their children, promote the, um, we promote the, the, the uh, trick or treating or whatever you want to call it, to, to make it custom maybe, to use folklore images, yeah. folklore characters, mm. you know, let's customize it, let's not pick something that's coming from another culture because we are not America. We are yeah. not yeah. Americans. We are Belizeans and coming and fusing into your different cultural or ethnic groups is, is very unique. Mm -hmm. You have a rich and proud history. Right. There. So we, we need to be ourselves and identify ourselves of, as what we are Belizeans. Yes. And once again, November 1st is the Finados for the Innocent Children. Innocent children. And, and on the second would, the be, would be the day you commemorate your altar for adults. Mm -hmm. And obviously on the children's one you have toys and you have lots of like... Yes, sweet. you have candies, you have ideals, you yeah. have a peculiar item of the person that... Or what the, the, the child mm -hmm. likes, you have yeah. to have marbles or... You can do it as creative as you want. Right. Yeah. And uh, we also have the, the um, decor, the paper decor mm -hmm. that has different shapes and that's to, to add the life to our mm -hmm. altar. Yeah. You do need white linen though, right? Yes, yeah. and yeah. something that is not used all year round, especially like the, the, the display mm -hmm. uh, gourd is something that's new. Mm -hmm. It's not con consumed during all the year. Yeah. yeah. So it's the purest uh, stuff that you can find. Yes, and something that you don't use on a daily basis. It's mm -hmm. something very unique to this. And um, I want to take the opportunity as well to thank everyone who made this possible. It was yeah. a, a, a lengthy process. I, I had the assistance of, of my grandmother, my assistant coordinator, the community itself preparing the items. Yeah. And yeah. So we're grateful that you know, there is a continuation and the preservation of our cultural identity in our community. Definitely. And in Belize by the other houses of culture and the National Institute of Culture and History that allows us to carry on our, our special mandate. Definitely. And as you said, there is an altar set up in Corozal, Banquita, San Pedro. Yes, and everybody and does it Benke. very differently. Um, in Corozal, they had uh, they had Alpishan, and they bring in their community to prepare the items and to know the process. What's Alpishan? And Alpishan is how the, the, the finados, well, the Day of the Dead from Yucatan came okay. to the Pekin era. And then, but due to the syncretism, then in Benke, it has fused with the Chan Mayas and the Itza Mayas, mm. creating the... the New Benke or, or the um, natives of Benke Viejo and San Jose So it'll yeah. be a different experience. And an Alpishan is when translated, it's food for the soul. And this is food for the soul. 
And that's why uh, some people call it All Souls Day as well. But that's within right. the church. That's from yes. the church. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. So but it meshes together to make finados in our communities. So there you have it, uh, another lesson. Thank you so much, Nayeli. We know you put so much preparation into this, and we greatly appreciate it. We greatly appreciate your invitation as well so that we could share it with the rest of our country. And if you were in Benke on Saturday or Sunday, is it both days? No, it's only Saturday. Saturday. 5.30 p.m. till 10 p.m. You will be able to check out uh, the Benke House of Culture's uh, altar uh, they'll have that displayed and so you can go there and and see all the work that they've done there thank, thank you, you once thank again you well. we're going to go ahead and take a break and when we come back we'll be talking to the salvation army so stay tuned